Hi, hello, everyone, and we want to thank you for tuning in to the inaugural episode of Girl, You Know What, and you can say that any way you want to. Uh, We are your hosts. I am Tahir. And I'm Keisha. And we've got a lot to say. We're going to be covering a lot of different topics, and um, I do want to say this at the beginning. You will hear Keisha refer to me as Danielle and that is my name for a lot of people who don't know. I know a lot of people know me as Danny, so duh, of course, Danny comes from Danielle. And yeah, my professional name is Tahir, so, but she- I'm gonna work on it, though. Uh-uh. I'm gonna work on it while we're here. I'm gonna try. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. My, fam- <laughs> my family calls me Danielle and Danny, so it don't matter, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just want to let you know that, so don't get confused. Um but just a little background on myself and then we'll talk about what the show what we want to give with the show and everything and then I got a couple questions for my girl um, because she always you know got some good info and good insight on things so I appreciate that uh, no problem no problem (laughs) so um, but for me um, for people who don't know um, I hold degrees from Franklin University and Hampton University and I may be going back and getting my masters from Hampton we'll see I'm on HBCU. okay okay and we both are I don't want to speak for I, her but I already know she is but we both are 1,000 and 50 hundred million percent advocates for HBCU so uh, well, oh, okay million. basically basically so um and besides that um I run a successful blog and website dannybspeaks.com as well as two podcasts, Danny B Speaks the Podcast, which is my first one, and then I have another one, which is Danny B Speaks Presents, not another true crime podcast. And and I we... just want to say, if you have not listened to that crime podcast, please, please do yourself a favor, please. Now that's what I'm talking because about. Thank you, Grace. Listen, listen. jaw dropping, jaw dropping. I mean, it's just so crazy. Like this true crime stuff is like. I was never. And now, you know, I love documentaries. Me, like, I need mean, anything that's real crime. That's real crime. I'm for it. And, and you know, and like I always say, like I f- remember I first started saying this, like when I first started doing them, and even when I like really got into true crime stuff, just watching, just being an observer. I hate to say that I like it, you know, or I love true crime because that's what it is. It's a true crime that happened, but I mean, it is what it is, you know, it's just, yeah, but it's out there. It's out there. Exactly. Exactly. But, um, well, I'll let you know where you can find all my information and, you know, my shows and everything like that. We'll do that later on the show, but go ahead, Keisha, tell them a little bit about yourself. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Keisha. And when I say what I'm about to say, don't judge me. I have since learned. I did start my education process at Central State University. You know, the best HBCU year round. Mm. I'm sure she would beg to differ, but you know. <laughs> no, um, I love every single I one. I did attain my bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies. So I have a degree in political science and education yes, ma'am. from Liberty University. Do not judge me. Judge me. <laughs> no judgment, girl. No judgment. Don't judge me. I feel y'all judging me. But you got that paper and I hold though from a master's them. degree from Liberty University. Don't judge me again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. And human services counseling with a concentration in marriage and family. I wanted to say that because when I start talking and say the stuff that I say, and when we speak, uh-huh. we got the brains that back up everything that come out of our mouth. I mean, let's so, just start right there, so but you know, they'll figure it out, but go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do run a website. It's a blog, wellnessandwomen.com. You can find me on Instagram. You can follow Wellness and Women on Twitter. I'm still trying to figure Twitter out, but <laughs> I'm still there pumping out content. And you can find wellness and women at wellnessandwomen.com um danielle and i have been friends about we graduated from high school don't worry about that right. but <laughs> it was the mid 90s when we met each other there you so. go can you believe that that is crazy when Girl, you really, we are her old as hell listen but, listen i mean so we are true 80s babies true like, true hands true down yes 80s like, babies and 90s kids can't nobody touch us with that uh-uh nothing no i am a lover of all 80s r&b and 70s r&b yes and 
a reality TV junkie. <laughs> and when I say reality TV junkie, I'm talking like 90 Day Fiance, Real House, Real Housewives of Atlanta. But listen, not after Nene. No. I'm watching close Nene. Uh-uh. I don't do it no more. TLC reality show. Yes. So any TLC reality show, I done seen it. Oh, TLC done Day took Fiance, over. They done, listen, remember what TLC was when we was growing up? No, nobody watched TLC. Now, <laughs> they don't even know. Like TLC was the learning channel. The like, learning channel. Out. Does it still what stand it for that? Today is reality TV at its finest, yeah, and I love all of it. Does I just I forgot that's what it stood for. Does it still stand for yes. the learning channel? <laughs> I thought they would have checked. They have educational programs. Child, they got a different type of education. Be, and they sure they did. They had a great show called My First Home, where it walked you through the process. They taught you how to put your offer in on the house. Not no more. Shut no. Up. See, I don't it's think I ever watched now. TLC unless it was like something that was specific on there that I had to watch, but that wasn't like a channel. Like I would fly, I would fly right through that channel. You know what I mean? Like I never watched TLC until I probably need to get a real estate license because I have been fascinated you, with yes. real estate since I was a kid. Yes. Like, you have, you always telling me stuff about real estate and things like that. I'm and I'm like, girl, with it. not that I even would care about selling properties. I want the license for the knowledge. Like, right, right. Definitely. I, so I was watching that my first home, we definitely were in high school. Wow. And I would get up early Saturday morning yeah. and look at that. Like, <laughs> it only came on, you had to catch it. It came on at like nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, see, and that's where you can that's, tell we bet we I like, had to get up. That's one of our differences because I wasn't even I was at Saturday morning. I was either going to a basketball camp or I was watching Saved by the Bell. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, or or car absolutely. or cartoons, so you know that's what. Even into high school, I'm not even going front about that. So, but that's a yes. whole different subject. You know, we'll get yeah. Nineties cartoons was the best. They're untouched. Oh my gosh, yes. Nothing and like I do them. some streaming reality. Mm -hmm. I just watched a wonderful reality show called I Am Georgina. It was all subtitles. Uh -huh. They had like translation. Oh okay. And I guess she's married to like the number one. European football player in the world. Oh, okay. I don't Chris Kristoff or Chris Christian Cristiano, something like that. I don't Cristiano I don't Ronaldo. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah, wife. I've heard of him. Yes, he look at me knowing stuff. Okay, yeah. Yes, his wife. Okay. She has a reality show on Netflix. I watched the whole season. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Oh, okay. I didn't and I just know happened that. to just it just happened to come up and I said, uh -huh. Oh, she looks kind of fashionable. Let me check this out. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> and I was not disappointed. Okay, yeah, I was not disappointed. So that's me in a just. Okay. So and and let me say this: like when she was talking about the re her being a reality show junkie. Now I used to, but I don't really watch that much TV anymore. When I do have, oh like, yeah, I have to DVR everything. Though. Yeah, I can't, that's how my I mom don't is. Actually watch like. Who has time to sit in like all this stuff that's on nobody? No, every program I have to DVR it, and I'm not gonna lie. Most of the time, it takes me ten minutes to fast forward <laughs> through a hour program because a lot of that mess is mess, and right. I just want to get to the to the nitty gritty. Get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But I still try to catch it. Right now, she now she does suggest for me to watch something like you know especially if she wants to talk about it i will watch it but when it comes to you know people want to know stuff about reality tv i'm not your girl anymore i'm sorry but you yeah know. It, it has really it has really gone downhill and i yeah, tend to now it wore me watch, out. i tend to watch reality tv that is um what they would consider to be social experiments, I think. Yeah, That's no, I do I'm like really 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, yeah. now I do like that. I do like my 600 pound life. I yes. you know, so I'll watch stuff like that, like you said. That's more like more social social stuff. You know what I mean? Because like I'll watch I like that. to figure out the mindset of people. Like I don't just necessarily want to. I don't want to be seeing everybody. And shaking and twerking. No, because even that got ridiculous after a while. Uh, like, you know, we used to watch, like, we used to be on Facebook just commenting the whole episodes of, like... Don't you be embarrassed when your damn 10-year posts come up 
and say the stuff that you said and what you was watching Girl, seven I, and eight years ago. I'd be so damn embarrassed. I stopped like, looking I at them. Like a, year, like a year ago, I stopped looking at those posts. Like unless something comes up, you know, like right at the top of my timeline that shows what I posted or what I said, you know, those years back, then I'll see it. But other than that, I can't, I can't watch it. Cause I'm just like, Ooh, who were you? What was, what was going cringy. on? Like, Oh, it's very cringy. It like, is. Oh God, I was borderline a hood rat. Yeah. <laughs> on the block. <laughs> yeah, I was born on my brain. Jesus. Girl, mentally we were on the block, honey. Ain't that what you said? <laughs> like, what in the hell was you thinking, girl? I mean, it'd be terrible when them damn reminders pop up. Yeah, terrible. I'd be disappointed as hell in myself. Yeah, like, did you really say that? Did you really, like, sit there and type that out? Formulate that thought? Formulate that thought. Oh, my God. And remember before it was emojis, and you used to have to put the little O <laughs> and the big O to make, like, that I. To make the I and everything. Child. Girl. Mm -mm. Was super ghetto. Super was ghetto. Real, real low budget back then. <laughs> Very. <laughs> I don't share nothing but Bible verses. Like if it's a, like if I done said something in the uh, past, like if it was a scripture, I'd be like, okay, I'm proud of this. Let me post this. Listen, but that other stuff. Or, uh -uh. Yeah, or you know me and my man. And I'd appreciate it if Mark will quit showing it. Like, good God. <laughs> Mark ain't thinking about nobody, girl. I read an article. Reminding us of the silly shit we used to do, Mark. Listen, he don't care because I read an article today, as a matter of fact, this morning about Mark, and it basically just said. He doesn't care how, because Facebook last month alone in December, well, actually it was December. Was it either? No, I might be lying. It wasn't, De it was either December or it was all of 2021, uh -huh. but they lost like, it was like a high billion. Oh yeah. I just was watching the nightly news yesterday and they and said the market, it, they crashed uh, just yesterday. Yeah. Cause he lost like they billions lost of dollars. Of yeah. And they, and he also lost like billions of users that's because people ain't behind that metaverse you know I yeah think, that's what it I is i think it freaked the investors out when mm -hmm. you know it, it made people nervous yeah and he don't and he doesn't and i ain't talking about our people right I'm talking about <laughs> i mean the pale people. it yeah. made the pale people nervous oh yeah 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 because they get real nervous yeah. about stuff they got we nervous. will definitely they got be talking about things like that for for sure but, yeah they yeah. want their money out of there let me oh, tell you yeah. something that you just brought this up mm-hmm the social experiment, because like I said, I like to watch, I love documentaries. Mm -hmm. There is a show on Netflix called The Social Experiment. You told me about and that. I still haven't watched it. Walks you through. And there are these people, are people who used to work at Google, who mm -hmm. worked at Pinterest, who worked at Facebook. All of the people who worked at the big places, and even the guy who created the like button. Shut up. He's he on there too. On there. Yes. And he said, when we did that at Facebook, we thought this was going to be like a good, we thought it was positive. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was bringing a level. And let me tell you what, let me, let me stop right here. This is why I keep saying it needs to be one black person in the room. Listen, at least. In all these boardrooms, they need one bone quisha. <laughs> That's gonna let you know straight up. Who will look at them and say, like that shit, Bath and Body Works pool with them always Black History Month lotions and sprays and that they got sitting on that table in there. And it wasn't like a special scent; it was one that you could buy in springtime. <laughs> they needed Bonquisha in the boardroom when they made that decision. Ain't none of them got one because on that same table is a candle. That's called watermelon lemonade. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Somebody needed to be in that boardroom and look at them and say, don't put this shit out. Don't right. put this out. Or at least take that watermelon lemonade out this month. At least that's why you're going to have this out to something. Don't put this design on this lotion. Don't Child. do this. This is cultural appropriation. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you so Lexi, sexy Lexi, <laughs> you telling me <laughs> ain't no capable people over there? Uh-uh. You didn't leave no capable people in charge when you stepped down. They don't feel like they have to. They feel like they can just search the uh, interwebs and, you know, see what the black people may want and what their, what our aesthetic well, is and, you know, things Lex like that. Mm -mm. that. Sexy Lexi knew better. Yeah, yeah. She, she knew better, but she didn't care. That's what it was. Mm. 
Uh-uh. I mean, that that just didn't make no sense right there to think that they did that. No, and then, oh, girl, and then speaking of which, so this other website, and I said they're probably based in China or somewhere, and that's no shade, that's being for real, but there's like a shirt. Child, um, I seen did you see it little, with the little white boys? That little pale baby. I mean, so y'all don't I mean, have, okay, even, even in the age of digital you know, editing. Right. You couldn't have clip-arted that sweatshirt on a black baby? Listen, at least. On a black kid? At least. Because I've come across plenty of websites that have, you know, I'm always looking for, you know, some HBCU stuff. I I try to buy from the Hampton website specifically, but if it's just something in general that I want to buy, then yeah, I'll go to like an independent uh, seller right, or right. something like that and I have seen you know some of them where they will have like a Malcolm X shirt or HBCU shirt on a white yeah. person and that's that's okay I get it right. I get it because yeah I mean they're just advertising the actual clothing well, okay just show us some respect during February at that's least all during I'm February asking. at least I mean if any time I mean y'all ain't going to any other time so at least during February I mean please you at know. least during February show us a teach of respect yeah it's okay so since we're on that topic this is a question I was actually going to ask you later so let's just let's just get right into it since we're talking Uh-oh. about it okay so Kanye West and T-Pain have both said that we need to get rid of Black History Month. Now, let me give you their reasons first, and then I want to know which, how you feel, and then I'll then we'll, I'll just piggyback off of what you got to say and say how I feel. So okay. we'll just do it like that. So T-Pain, and I kind of agree with him. I get what he's saying, but, you know, I think that both of them are a little ignorant in it too. But T-Pain basically said that he wants to get rid of Black History Month because – um, we need to celebrate black accomplishments and contributions to U.S. history all year long rather than just one month. And this one month being designated to black history, I mean, February being designated as Black History Month, it still s- separates us. It's still segregate, you know, is causing segregation. Right. Okay. So Kanye, his thing is basically the same thing. Um, now, let me let me pull up this article real quick so I can okay. give you the gist of what he was saying, because, you know, of course, with Kanye, you got to have specifics because my dude is all over the place. But this is pretty oh, much. I could be here. <laughs> we could talk about this Kanye West for a whole hour. Listen, and we may have to one day because the dude is out of control. But so this is what he said on Joe Rogan's show. And I have another question. I have another. Oh, uh, father. Listen. <laughs> He was my other oh, t- Joe. Joe was my other topic for you today, girl. He was so get ready, but he happened to be on all of all places Joe Rogan show and he said that um let me see if I could find the point of it. Let me see. He called it programming. He said Black History Month is programming. Racism doesn't end until we get to a point where we stop having to put the word black in front of it because it's like we're putting the rim a little bit lower for ourselves. That doesn't make any sense, but I... That don't make no, no. sense. I wish you could have seen the look on my face, but okay. <laughs> but that's what Both he said. Ones. Yeah. So um, we shouldn't have to be put in a special box or a special month. That's just how I feel about it. We need to have a Black Future Month that celebrates our future endeavors and that's accomplishments. Stupid. Go yeah. on. Okay, that's that's where I'm going to leave it at right there. So that's his that's reasoning. Stupid. Yeah, that's, that's Black very stupid. Future Month is dumb. It's dumb. And it sounds like it is coming from a man who's having a psychotic break. Yeah, which he does. Yeah. And so, no disrespect to those of you who are suffering from mental health because look that is my field like mm-hmm. I, I got all the respect and care for people who are going through and i do think that people have mental breaks when they suffer tragedy right. he suffered a great tragedy when he lost his mother yes and i don't think he ever got the proper care that he needed mm-hmm. to rebound from and what happened won't. to him he won't that's the sad and part until he get some African Americans around him mm-hmm. who really care for him, who really love him, mm-hmm. and who really care about him and not what he can do for them. Mm-hmm. He's going to continue in this cycle. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now, while you was reading that, the first thing that came to my mind was Morgan Freeman. When Morgan Freeman had that interview with Mike Wallace, he told Mike Wallace 
why why are they relegating my history to a month? Mm-hmm. Do you want your history relegated to a month? <laughs> and Mike Parks looked at him and said, he like Morgan Freeman said, when is white history month? Mm-hmm. Mike Wallace said, well, I'm Jewish. Oh, well, when is Jewish history month? Right. Right. He said, do you want a Jewish history month? Mm-hmm. He said, no, but let me tell you something. What do they do? They celebrate themselves and they keep their culture tight. The Jewish people do. The Jewish exactly. community does. Exactly. Black people can never. I hate to say it, but we can never. So that's really my concern right there. Mm-hmm. Is, like you said, black people could never. Instead of focusing our energy on getting them to accept us, what you need to do is swallow a pill is uh, they don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to be able to make them give a fuck. Exactly. I'm sorry. And I mean, and you, that, they just don't. No, and that falls into critical race theory too. That's this is what they are calling critical race theory. This is what they're using as critical race theory, which it's not. That's not even. But that's what they it falls care. into. They want to and erase it altogether. Not comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Stop forcing. Stop trying. And we need to get comfortable with this as a people. We always want to force people to accept something that they don't want to accept. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest problem with relationships. It's the biggest problem that we have, period. Yeah. And the only person that suffers is the person that's doing the forcing. Mm -hmm. Because they're still not going to want to be bothered with you. No. After you forced, cried, marched, shouted, did whatever you did, they still don't give a damn. No. Uh Uh-uh. They still don't care. No, they don't give a damn. And I, this is why I had so much respect for Tom Joyner. Because what did he come up with? That black 365 days. Like, yep. he partnered with McDonald's for the black 365. Mm-hmm. Yes, because we black every day of the year. Every day. Not just in February. We don't want to just come out every like day. of a box in February. No. Uh-uh. You know, sometimes I get on my little kick. Because I, I know sometimes we got to remind these people out here. I get on my kick, I'll just start sharing all kind of just black pictures. Mm-hmm. And, all year long. At any random day at a time. Who cares if it's February or If not? I come across something, if I come across a beautiful picture of Nina Simone, I'm I'm posting it and it's going to yeah. have to tell you something that she did. I mean, let's and just talk about it. And that's you and I. It. When mm-hmm. I come across certain stuff about the Jacksons, I know that that is your feel. You love Michael Jackson. You love Jenna Jackson. Mm-hmm. I share all that stuff with you just so you can put it out there. Right, yeah. Because I know that that's your niche. But mm-hmm. I definitely believe we need to start, we need to start respecting ourselves yeah. every day of the damn year. That's number one. Because I'm going to just tell you the truth. I ain't trying to get them to ex- ex- accept nothing about me. No. I'm, I'm done. I'm, no, n- never. No, because first of all, they're not going to, so why even put that energy they're trying to do everything to reverse it so you know all the accomplishments and everything like that so why even waste time and since we're here Mm -hmm. and since we have come down this street Mm -hmm. and since you brought up critical race theory yes um uh, (laughs) black parents (laughs) y'all gonna get mad at me and I, I already know. Like, oh, you know, we don't give a damn about nobody getting mad. Girl, and girl. And that, that. <laughs> Why y'all keep sending y'all kids to school with them white people anyway? Exactly. To, just to get their feelings hurt. Because first of all, even in an urban school, mm-hmm. your child has a higher percentage of their teacher being non-ethnic or however you want to put it politically correct. Your child will have a teacher that's probably white right as they say what is it 70 percent of public school teachers are caucasian i mean even when we were coming up i had to really sit there and think about it and i was like when was my first and not just i had my kindergarten teacher was black she was a black woman so that you know i was like okay but that was like my first now that you say that i'm saying girl girl but then not until then i didn't have another black teacher until middle school and if I'm not I mistaken, like it was, was just here, one. So, I, some people know, like, I I was born in Dayton. Mm-hmm. And so, I feel like when I was here with my grandparents, mm-hmm. I feel like I, I 
I had a I know I had a black teacher in English because she's the lady who taught us handwriting. Right. I know I had a black math teacher when I was in the third grade. Mm-hmm. Um. So when I got to fourth grade, my that was when I moved to Columbus. Mm-hmm. My teacher was not black. Right. She was racist as hell. <laughs> of course. Let me tell you how girl. racist she was, and I knew. Now, Listen. looking back, I know she was racist. Oh, yeah. I, I talk about that with a lot of people I went to elementary school with. We look back and we're like, damn, like we were really treated like shit. But go ahead. Yeah, I did not know it then, but this is how I know for sure. Mm-hmm. So, um, my mother is a believer in corporal punishment. Right. So, I, I guess my mama got tired of beating my ass. Mm-hmm. And I kept telling my mama, like, she don't like me. Right. And so, my mother was like, oh. She don't like you. So we had a tragedy happen in our family um, when I was in the fourth grade. And mm-hmm. I had to come out of school for a week. We had a death in our family. Mm-hmm. And I had to come back here to date. Then we stayed here for a week. Right. But my grandmother was like, well, it don't make no sense for that child to have to stay out of school. She took me down the street to my old elementary school where I just had been, you know, the year prior. Yeah. And they let me sit in class. You know, for the week yeah. while we were here. Oh, okay. So my mother was like, oh, some shit that would never happen now. Like, they would never. Oh, no. Uh-uh. So my mother was like, oh, she doesn't like you. Or you, but the but the people in Dayton let you stay in class. So that doesn't even make any sense, which really what she said didn't make sense. But yeah. So then that lady called again and I kept saying like, so then my mother kind of noticed Okay, this bitch is calling here too much now. Mm-hmm. Like, my Something's mother threatened to call the NAACP on her. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that bitch never called again. Okay. And what, that was in the 80s? Yeah, they weren't trying yes. to hear, uh uh-uh, they it weren't was, trying to. Uh-uh. It had to be 90. It had to be 89, 90. Not, yeah. We were in the fourth in the grade. grade. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and they didn't play that back then. They weren't trying to hear that. They were like, now they try to... Uh... And I mean, when I tell you she was an old racist, she was, listen, oh. old hunchback racist ass. Listen. Listen. My mother told her. She, she look, I guess my mother said, look, I done beat this girl's ass all I can beat. She gets <laughs> A's. She getting beat. What the hell more What is you going on? You gonna keep calling me, talking about she talking? Yeah. You wasting my time she, now about some bullshit. She sure did. She told her, I'm going to call the NAACP on you. That bitch never called that house again. (laughs) And then I knew. But now looking back, I'm like, she was racist for real. Mm -hmm. Yep. And see, and they knew we didn't know what it really was. We just knew, we knew something in our, like, this teacher doesn't like me for some reason. Yeah, because that's the only way I could explain Mm -hmm. it to you. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say. That's like, it. she don't like me. Yep. You treat me like this. You're sitting me here, but you're doing this yep. to her, you know, and, and like, yep. growing up in Columbus Public Schools, and I know it was different, it was, wasn't much different in Dayton, but, and I know there are more black people in the city in Dayton, but growing up, oh, yeah. yeah, but growing up in Columbus, you're still at, especially with the, the schools that I went to. Now I will say my elementary school was, as close, it still was predominantly black, but it was as close as 50-50. I would say maybe about 40-60 black for 60%, mm-hmm. 40% white. Because it was, a, it was a school where they called it a traditional school, Oakland Park Traditional School, where they tried to do traditional values, I guess, quote, unquote. It was the elementary version of Monroe and Cos. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so it was on that level. And um, that's why I did not want to go to Monroe. That's why I took my butt to Clinton, to my regular neighborhood school. And that's why I didn't want to go to Cos because of what I went through at Oakland Park with all them rules and things like that. And, you know, and the way that you were treated and stuff. So we knew kids, you know, when something's not right, but you just can't put your finger Absolutely. on it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But when you're that young, you're nine. Yeah. You know. And we wasn't the nine that these nine-year-olds is. No. Mm-mm. We were taught, you know, respect and mm-hmm. stay in your place. And, right. You know, with certain stuff you couldn't say, and, you know. You had to take we it We let our much. parents fight our battles. Mm-hmm. These kids so disrespectful. They be talking crazy to the teacher and yeah. stuff. So. And then if the parent comes and says something that they don't want to hear, <laughs> they're going to cuss their parent out, too. 
yeah, 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 yeah. So, but but first and foremost, yeah, yeah, it's totally different. Uh, uh-uh. uh. So yeah, she she sure did. My mother told her girl, I'm gonna call the NAACP on you. Call my house again. She and I get one never phone call. Called. I don't think I got in trouble anymore. See, ain't that a bitch? Child. And I was like. I, I, I don't, and you know, you be trying to think too, because I'm a person who like self evaluates. Right. So you be trying to think like, and what did I do? Like, you mm-hmm. know, she said I was talking too much, girl. She probably right though. I mean, you know, it is what it is, but <laughs> you know, right. she was probably right. But you know what? It would didn't recall. It didn't call for all of that to be calling yeah. your mama oh, every day. Child. And you know too. I'm going to say this without it being too heavy or mm-hmm. being too crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, and teachers, you don't know what kids is going through at home. Though. Right. So, you don't know. Mm-hmm. And my mama was beating my ass for that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm having to deal with you being all funny, acting a racist during the day, and then at night when you call in because I'm talking. Now I'm about to be half dead. <laughs> Exactly. Like, you, don't, you don't understand the stress that you're putting on my life. Exactly. During all day, 24 7, all day. Because then I'm thinking about That's it on I the weekend. These new kids don't know real bullying. They don't. These new kids don't know real stress Mm-mm. for real. They don't, they don't know. Mm-mm. No disrespect to like what's going on with the kids and bullying and stuff. Right. Because, but I, yeah, because I do understand this. Yeah. Bullying now is constant. Yes. Because they got access to you 24-7. But see, then that becomes a parent's responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know, like, what do we do with the kid over here? Right. Even in the summertime. Mm-hmm. You do not get your cell phone until 3 o'clock in the mm-hmm. afternoon. And you have to turn it back in. It depends. I, sometimes I'm a night owl. So if I'm up till 11, yeah. she can keep it till 11. If I'm up till 12, I let her keep it till 12. Right. But you have to turn it in at night. Yeah. You know, kids going to bed with their phones. Yeah. And you and you not, and then people are not checking the kids' phone. Mm-hmm. You don't know what kind of havoc your child is wreaking on a, on another child's life. You exactly. You ain't got a clue. Mm-mm. And I tell her in a minute. You better not ever give me this phone back and it better and it don't have no text messages in it because I'm gonna bust it on the ground. I'm gonna break it. Right, because what did you do with them text messages? We knew what why you did. You right, exactly. I wanna I wanna it better be full of text messages when I get it. <laughs> I mean full to this runneth over, as my grandmother say. My cup runneth over. Listen. It better be full. Listen. Oh, and sidebar real Instagram quick, y'all. Instagram messages too. I mean I, it better be a thousand of them. Right, but I want to let people know that we're going to get a lot of nanaisms, and they'll learn what nanaisms are <laughs> going forward, <laughs> and you will appreciate every single one of them. But go ahead, girl. I just had to throw that in there because when you Nana mentioned Nana, in a minute, when you get on her nerve, listen, my stuff runs over. <laughs> yeah. I don't play. Okay, and we know what that means. Shut it up. And that's how you know. Stop playing with Stop me. Stop playing with me. <laughs> going somewhere she 82 and she a fight like okay. don't play with her listen they don't make them look my grandmother she'll be 84 next month and they don't make them like that no more uh-uh. oh, child. listen they, don't. they and people who don't know but yeah i mean i live with my grandmother you know and it's by oh, choice yeah. i don't want people to and be I'm like about to be living with mine too, exactly so, I, so. I, think, I think it's it's come to that time where mm-hmm. you know she still gets out she yeah was, i just got off the phone with her she was just out there shoveling her snow. Oh, but no. she's living in a house, and I just think it's time. Yeah, she taking that we care too much. Get a place together. Yeah, you know. So it's it, we we have reached that moment, and I would yeah. like to do it when she's still with it. You know, oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. When Cause... she's still, you know, but 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 taking care of a house has become. A burden to her. Yeah, you when know. she out there shoveling, doesn't uh, want to go in the basement anymore and wash clothes. Oh yeah, that's know? how it was here. Yeah, before my grandfather, you know, a couple years before my grandfather heaters. passed, they had to bring the washer and dryer upstairs. They had to hook it yeah. up. Yeah, because she wasn't yeah. going down there no more. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that stuff is. You know, I wish we would have made some changes. Um, when. When my grandfather first passed away, right? He passed away in 2008, and I wish we would have, you know, done some things like cleared out the garage and mm-hmm. brought the 
washer and dryer upstairs so she could have been right in the garage right you know just certain things that would have made life easier for her yeah, there. yeah. but now she just wants one level living mm-hmm. you know she doesn't want so and i just feel like it's better to live with her now right or move her in with us versus letting her get her own apartment Mm -hmm. and then three or four years down the line we're going to have to move her again and she's still going to have to move in so i think it's just the best decision to do it now yeah so Mm -hmm. that is what our goal is for for the springtime right okay everybody to be under one roof so maybe she'll be a guest oh yeah once we're on oh lord jesus could you imagine oh Oh, i'm so excited oh oh, yeah you had to you had to warn me because i'm had to say a couple (laughs) mighty prayers like the night before (laughs) and right before (laughs) (laughs) and i'll be here for all of it you need to be on there telling the people what does say if the Lord. Yeah. Lord. I'd be like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Honey, we had a whole sermon this morning. Here we go. Okay. You already know how it goes down. Listen, she don't play. Do, does she know that you used to record her, like, her voice, and you would just, like, listen? Yes, because <laughs> she told me that she was going to call the authority. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Not the police. But the authorities. People I mean, call the authorities on me. Oh, she meant business when she said the authorities, honey. <laughs> and then told me one time, girl, you don't put my face and my voice on that internet. This somebody be the mess around and kill me. <laughs> I mean, it'd be full blown crazy. Okay? Oh yeah, it goes from zero to one hundred in two Child. in point two seconds. <laughs> she said, "You gonna keep on? I'm gonna call the authorities on you, honey." <laughs> I said the authorities. The authorities, honey. Yeah, she she meant business on that. So business, it, okay. It could be the police. It could be the FBI. You don't know, but she calling honey, somebody on she you. She call them on me. She said, don't be putting my voice on there. And on that internet. Don't be putting my, phone, my face on that internet. That internet. So she was highly offended. <laughs> like, honey. But then, then two weeks later, she'll call you and say, this this what you put put this up there on the, yes. on, the book, on the Facebook. Oh, she thought about it. She was like, "Oh, I can yeah, get my put, word put this, out, put honey." This up there. Yeah, <laughs> on the Facebook, honey. Honey. <laughs> yes, I yeah, love she, it. She's gonna be walking around talking. I'm sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and you just got to put your mic towards her, like you know. Oh yeah, honey. She 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 has something to say. Oh yeah. Yeah, and we need it. We need that word. We need that wisdom, honey. And once we get moved in and get adjusted, I will probably, by then, we'll probably be set up where we can be, like, on camera. And oh, yeah, girl. Honey, it's really going to get real. Oh, it's going to get too real. <laughs> listen it's really gonna get real oh yeah because so, th- th- y'all think this is something this ain't nothing 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 at but all but i think we covered a lot today i think yeah. you know they got a gist of what's coming oh yeah because it's gonna, gonna be, be a lot about yeah for sure and we hope to record once a week so yeah yeah bear with us while we get everything get the kinks all worked out and because you know like i mentioned on my podcast when I was talking about this one briefly we're not in the same city as I guess you you could probably could tell by now you know from the conversation so we're doing this um you know how you call it uh uh, girl I can't even think of the dang word I mean I said it wrong but is it remotely there you go yes that's it (laughs) and I should know because I've been remote working for two (laughs) for about two (laughs) years girl just out of it but um but yeah but yeah so that was our first episode so hopefully um everyone will enjoy yes tune in and spread the word girl you know what is the name of the podcast so you can catch us on our social medias on our website again my social medias are basically all under danny b speaks and my and um, i'm at wellness and women wellness and women well on instagram and women and yes. you know dm me if you have something a topic if you have something you want us to discuss if you have a question if you finna hate on us down and dm me that too yeah, yeah i mean it, it we'll is what it, it is 
we ain't heard it ain't nothing we ain't heard before so you know it is what it is and so. don't come for my thick throat because I, <laughs> I know i sound like i got cotton in my mouth your mama shit. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so worried about that, y'all. I told her, I said, girl, you sound fine. So he, I sound crazy as hell. But so anyway. she, she just ain't used to it, but you know. You, don't, still, don't, gonna get, you still gonna hear me. Oh, yeah, we, we still gonna hear the complaints about it. It's okay. It's okay, girl, you know. But it is what it is. So, But thank you all for tuning in. And, you know, we'll we'll just get back with y'all next episode. Until next time, have a blessed week. All right, y'all. <laughs>